Dear Rail lovers, welcome back to Railways Explained. For today, we decided to take a break from rail infrastructure projects and discussions about different countries' railway systems, and instead we'll talk about one, let's say, pure railway topic. This video will be dedicated to the concept of a marshalling yard and its role in the railway transport system. At the beginning, we must point out that the term marshalling yard varies depending on where you are, and in the United States and Canada it can be classification yard, or in Central Europe, a shunting yard. Besides our basic discussion, we will try to show some examples of the world's largest marshalling yards. Of course, if you support Travis Explained and want to help us improve our production, you can do it on Patreon. Check out our Patreon offers on the link in the description and consider becoming our patron. Now, let's start with the role of marshalling yards in the Railway Operation and Transportation Service. Railways as a system or mode of transportation have several advantages over other types of land transport. From the indisputable environmental advantage to safety, security, reliability, automation capabilities and high efficiency in mass transportation of freight and passengers on long distances. The key term for today's video is the mass of goods in railway transport and how it is achieved. The service of rail freight transport can be achieved through the organization of the so-called block or unit trains or through the conventional concept of the single wagon load transportation. Block train or a train load service is particularly efficient and economical for high volume commodities. Characteristics of these trains are that all wagons carry the same commodity and they are shipped from the same origin to the same destination, without being split up or stored along the train path. Block trains as a service enable railways to compete more effectively with road and inland waterway transport system. Whilst the block train as whole travels unmodified and directly from the sender to the recipient, the single wagon transport is much more complex. In the single wagon load traffic, individual wagons or group of wagons from different customers are bundled together to form one train. These individual wagons are loaded at the loading station, transported to a marshalling yard for the train load consolidation, bundled in a freight train, transported from the yard to the destination and distributed at the arrival station. The system contains several interfaces and thus more complex processes than in case of a block train. The importance of single wagon transport is reflected in the fact that the customer can choose single wagon load transportation when he wants to dispatch one or several wagons at a time, but does not have enough quantity to fill a full train. Sorting and distributing the wagons are essential for a successful single wagon load system and for that marshalling yards are recognized as key factors for the smooth functioning of the single wagon load transportation. How exactly does it work? The single wagon load pattern is mostly operated in the so-called node system, as you can see on the screen. There are rail stations that provide loading facilities for direct transshipment of goods to rail. Track infrastructure is provided for siding operations, the collection of wagons from sidings and the formation of local freight trains. Node stations are needed for the collection of wagons from local freight trains to form long-haul trains. Marshalling shunting yards handle long-haul trains which come from different node stations and which consist of wagons that have different final destinations. Within the marshalling yard these trains are disassembled and the single wagons are again reassembled to long-haul trains where the whole set of wagons has the same destination node. In this way marshalling yards obtain a certain degree of economies of scale benefits and reduce the wastages of the system. On the other hand, the overall operating efficiency is limited by the capacity of the yards and their utilization. Now it's getting interesting. There are three types of marshalling yards, flat yards, gravity yards and hump yards. As we said, there are two basic activities that are performed in these yards, disassembling and reassembling of trains. For the efficient implementation of these activities, each marshalling yard has an arrival yard to receive freight trains in the railway yard system. Then it has classification yard to disassemble received freight trains and to sort wagons. And finally, a departure yard to depart freight trains from the railway yard system. In addition, there is maintenance yard and a depot to serve wagons and locomotives. Not needed to say, yard operations also require various resources such as locomotives, dispatchers and shunting locomotives. Now, the types of yards. 
Flat yards are the yards where trains are disassembled by push and pull method. It is done with the help of shunting locomotives that sort them on the appropriate tracks and thus create a train with the wagons for the same destination. Gravity yards were invented already in the 19th century. They are basically saving shunting locomotives by letting the wagons roll by gravity. This method has been a major benefit despite the need for the larger amount of manual work required to stop the rolling wagons. Gravity yards are designed with a continuous falling gradient and a distinct type of layout, and because of that massive earthwork is required to build this kind of yards. Gravity yards have a very large capacity but also a lot of difficulties related to safety and for that reason only a few remain in operation today. Most gravity yards were built in Germany and in Great Britain, a few also in some other European countries, for example was a yard on the Warsaw Vienna Railway in Poland. In the USA there were only a few such yards, one of them being still operational CSX Redville Yard south of Boston. Finally, the third group of yards are the hump yards. They are the largest and most effective marshalling yards with the largest shunting capacity, often several thousand wagons a day. They work similarly to gravity yards, but the falling gradient is limited to a small part of the yard, namely the hump. It is the heart of the yard, a lead tracks on a small hill over which a shunting locomotive pushes the wagons. Single wagons or a block of coupled wagons are uncoupled just before or at the crest of the hump, and rolled by gravity onto their destination track in the group of tracks where the wagons are sorted. These are called the classification ball. The first hump was built in Germany in 1858. The speed of the wagons rolling from the hump into the classification ball must be regulated according to several criteria. Are they full or empty, is inside heavy or light freight, varying number of axles, whether there are few or many cars on the classification tracks, and varying weather conditions, including temperature, wind speed and direction. In terms of speed regulation, there are two types of hump yards, with or without retarders mechanism. In the old non-retarder yards, braking was usually done in Europe by rail workers who laid skates onto the tracks. The skate or wheel chalk was manually or in rare cases mechanically placed on one or both of the rails so that the treadlers or rims of the wheel caused frictional retardation and resulted in the halting of the wagon. In the United States, this braking was done by riders on the wagons. In the modern retarder yards, this work is done by mechanized rail breakers called retarders which break the cars by gripping the wheels. A typical hump yard layout is presented on the screen and, as you can see, includes three major parts, receiving area, classification area and departure area. Wagons pass through the yard according to the following process. First, the inbound train enters the receiving area where locomotives are detached from wagons. Second, wagons are inspected for mechanical problems. If the condition is good, they'll be sent to hump. While humping, these wagons are rearranged and sorted on different tracks in the classification area. Another shunting engine pulls sorted cars to their designated departure track. Wagons are then assembled to their respective outbound trains according to a departure schedule. Finally, the outbound train leaves the yard from the departure area after inspection. A wagon spends about two-thirds of its system time within yard and a significant portion of this time in classification yard is spent in waiting for humping and assembling. Unfortunately, the long dwell time of wagons in the yard is a big barrier for the improvement of the railway transportation. The world's largest marshalling yard is Bailey Yard located in North Plate in Nebraska. It is owned and operated by Union Pacific and it is named after former Union Pacific President Ed H. Bailey. In 1995, as a result of its massive size, the yard was recognized in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest rail yard in the world. Bailey Yard is halfway between Denver and Omaha. It covers a total area of 11.5 square kilometers, it is over 13 kilometers in length and 3.2 kilometers wide at its widest point. Bailey Yard has 200 separate tracks, totaling 507 kilometers in length with 985 switches and 17 receiving and 16 departure tracks. Union Pacific employs more than 2600 people in North Plate, most of whom are responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of Bailey Yard. An average of 140 trains and over 14,000 wagons pass through Bailey Yard every day, and the yard sorts approximately 3,000 wagons daily using the yard's two humps. The eastbound hump is a 10 meters tall mount and the westbound hump is 6.1 meters high. 
These are used to sort 4 wagon Saminet into one of 114 classification ball tracks, 49 for westbound trains and 65 for eastbound. The ball tracks are used to form trains headed for destinations across North America, including East, West and Gulf Coasts, as well as Canadian and Mexican border. The second largest yard in the world is the Maschen Marshalling Yard near Maschen, south of Hamburg on the Hanover-Hamburg railway line in Germany. This marshalling yard takes an area of 2.8 square kilometers and has a length of 7 kilometers and a maximum width of 700 meters. It possesses a total track length of 300 kilometers, 100 home, 115 distant and 688 shunting signals. As a two-sided shunting facility, Maschen has two train formation yards. The north-south system has a set of 48 departure tracks and a set of 16 reception tracks. The south-north system consists of a set of 64 departure tracks and a set of 17 reception tracks. Both systems are supplemented by storage and marshalling sidings. In order to achieve the aspiration for a capacity of 11,000 wagons per day, Maschen was equipped from the beginning with the most modern shunting technology available in the 1970s. But we need to point out that Maschen has not reached the upper planning limit of 11,000 wagons per day so far. The highest number of dispatched wagons was 8,400 on 11 December 1985. You were watching the story about railway marshalling yards on Railways Explained. Thank you very much for your attention, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video and for more interesting railway stories make sure to subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.